based on it, but earth frequency is something that we know about, yes. Okay. Do you happen to have a chart that I could use with some of that? If you phone my office, you can ask them for a, a, a frequency list, yes. Okay, thank you. Yep, and it's on, on that handout paper there, yep. Uh, has it been your concern that the uh, medical authorities are actually uh, sincerely concerned with whether your technology works or not? And uh, my second question is, is have you investigated uh, complementary treatments like uh, ozone therapy, uh, oh colloidal yeah. silver, Absol and how do they work in conjunction with your technology? Oh yeah, with right Abs technology? absolutely. We'd, you know, I could talk about this all day, but when you, when you take these adjuncts and stuff like that, what we're doing with Rife, it's just one of the things. And when you're sick, you don't just use one thing and think it's going to do it all for you. Sometimes the co right combination of two or three things can work very well. And we find that things like ozone, oxygen, and all that sort of stuff in terms of cancer work very well with the device. That was the first part of that question. So you guys' memory's no better than mine. You know? <laughs> it had to do with something about the medical uh, people. Uh, uh, the, que the question was, um, has it been your experience that, that, that the uh, medical authorities or the investigative bodies have expressed sincere concern as to whether or not Rife technology works, or is it a form of obfuscation? You know, <coughs> my, my hopes is with the medical associations that eventually they do get on stream. I don't have concerns whether or not they actually do or not, because if we kept waiting for somebody to make a change, it would never happen. It takes people like myself and yourselves to make the damn thing happen. So I'm not waiting on them. I'm doing my own thing. And if we have to form our own thing and make it all that's fine. <laughs> they can either join the winning team later or go the, you know, the present method they have. I would like them to accept what we have. But until somebody or something puts some money behind it to put some, you know, th what we're talking about here is, is uh, anecdotal evidence. Until you start putting some good science behind this stuff, you can't do it. But you know, we formed in Courtney the Global Health Research Foundation. We've opened it up. The government's got a big problem with hepatitis C, right? There's $50 million in that for research. We haven't got a penny of it. We've gone to roots to investigate if we can get it. We're not a recognized this, or you don't have that yet, or whatever, to stop it, you know? I don't really think they care. You know, the system is, is fairly well entrenched, and what's going to happen is a new association will scare the hell right out of them, you know? Hi, Don. I, I think that uh, obviously the interest and excitement that you're generating here is just phenomenal. Good. And I have a question. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I have a question for you. Uh, you mentioned with there's been some sign with Alzheimer's, some regeneration. What about with things like artificial joints or metal plates in the body? <coughs> okay, that one of the nice things about it is no problem. We've had people with metal plates in their heads, staples, wires, and so forth in their bodies, pins, no problem. They might feel a little tingling sensation around it because it's a different type of technology than the contact type device and, not, and we're not using raw electricity. You can't go in and attract to the metal, which sort of becomes like a heating element on a, on a, on a stove. Uh, raw electricity does that, but our device doesn't because it's using the photon content to carry the little electrical packet of frequency into the body. The delivery method is different, so it can't roast and toast anything. This is why there's no danger to this device. And we talk about the RF coming off this. Some RF is very dangerous to the body. We found everything that we have worked with, this is nothing less than friendly. This is the friendliest thing that you've ever had in your life. No kidding. We have never had, in over 1,000 volunteers, one report of an injury. Totally non-invasive, and it is so simple, one day it'll make it. Mm -hmm. this, the, another question I have with the um, pervasiveness of the use of Ritalin on kids with ADHD and ADDDH and all that kind of stuff. Has there been any groups that have come to you to look at using that in school situations or anything like that? No. Um, you're talking in relation to using a particular drug. and. Our device complementary, or in place of. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even anticipate that it would be complementary. If they're using Ritalin, that's that's, that's a drug thing, and I wouldn't want to see it that way. But is there we, been we any? Ha we haven't had that kind no. of a relationship. But mm -hmm. we, I have worked with an eight-year-old child, HIV positive, 
was supposed to be dead by the time he was 11 or 12. He's 14 now, and there's absolutely no sign of the virus in his system. We're not saying that he's cured. I think that virus is still there. These things have an amazing way of adapting, and it will sit until the opportunistic time comes for it to resurface again. But with the device, it builds the immune system. It encourages the immune system to do its work in the body, and that's one of the nice things with a device. It's not just knocking off something, but it's energizing you to get everything else working. We've got scientific evidence of that. Okay, for example, when we run the device, this sounds a little bit uh, <coughs> dangerous, but it actually knocks off a whole bunch of white cells in the body. But every white cell that you have is not a, a, a good working white cell. It'll knock off the negative charge white cells. <coughs> now, a negative char charge white cell, what I'm finding, is just about a useless white cell in the body because if it doesn't have a positive, your viruses and most of your bacterium that's negative to the body is a negative charge. <coughs> so you need an opposite to attract, a positive and a negative. So if you have negative white cells and negative viruses, they can never get together and do the walls, right? <coughs> So we find by knocking them off, it forces your body to produce more white cells. Some of them are negative, some are positive. And the, the positive white cell po population so slowly builds up, and it just keeps knocking the negative ones down. <coughs> and pretty soon the immune system is right back up, and boy, it's just like Muhammad Ali. Refreshed. Okay. Yeah. It's refreshed. One last quick question. What about schizophrenia? Well, we've, I've had... I've had worked per personally with two people who had multiple personalities. I, just, I'm, I know it's not the same subject, no. but it's as close as I can come to the head. These two women who, one was dealing with 16 personalities, the other one said she had 30 some on, and I don't doubt it because meeting them you didn't know who you were talking to certain days. It finally started to give these people a bit of a life. They could sort of hold things together a lot better as long as they were attending the sessions. When they were out of the sessions for two weeks, they were back to their own normal, almost paranoid mm. lifestyles. So there was evidence of helping. And again, this is where the work has to go. We have to see, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Have these programs been thought to be sustained on a maintenance basis as opposed to a curative basis? I think it's going to have to be on a, <coughs> on a long-term basis until your body actually gets back into knowing what good health is. Every, most everything that's happening in the body that, which is, is detrimental, to, which is causing disease or an illness of some sort, something is causing it. And if you can get to the causative and eliminate it, the body can go healthy again. But until you get there, you know. Are there any uh, limitations with the Rife machine? You know, <coughs> I, I expect there are. Uh, for example, if you have a cold and flu this year and the frequencies work for you and you can run them next year, they're not going to work right. because you have a new strain and until they figure out, or somebody, one of the other researchers out there figures out what the new strains are running at in terms of frequencies, you're not going to get much out of it. You'll get a little bit, okay, but not as much as you want in terms of putting it right on the numbers, you know. So, so that's where its limitations oh, okay. are. Well, the other limitation is, is because it is putting mm -hmm. out RF, which is radio frequency, it can affect CB radios, television sets that are on rabbit ears within a local vicinity. But it's a small price to pay for what, what, what we're gaining from it, you know? Yeah. I just have one more quick question. Uh, I use homeopathy, and that's a free, you know, that affects the freq it's a frequency kind of medicine. Is that going to interfere with the Rife system? No, I know it does with a back. Rife will interfere with it. So I mean, if, you, if, you want, if you want all your homeoth homeopathy, homeopathy. Pr products to run herpes, for example, run the herpes frequencies, and they'll feed in. Now, Paul is, where's Paul? Paul's been doing a lot of scientific work, and then Paul will probably be able to answer that better. Yeah, but Paul's found a different method of, of inducing signal into product mm -hmm. rather than Rife. But I do know that Rife will affect whatever you have sitting on the shelf. So you want to put your stuff in either metal cabinets with aluminum shielding around it if you're going to be anywhere in the same room. Yeah. So you're saying while you're on the Rife system, don't bother using your homeopathics really? Oh, you no, know, I didn't say that. I just said if you had it sitting on the shelf, yeah. the frequencies that you run out of the machine are going to influence what you got in the bottle. Yeah. So same, th yeah. So yeah. to me, I would think that I wouldn't take homeopathy while I'm doing that. Yeah. It, it would just negate it, I would think. It might. Yeah. It might. Yeah. 
Uh, what kind of success have you had with the joints and specifically uh, cartilage regeneration? Really high. Um, eat jello with it and run rife. No, no, no fooling. Um, Actual of, regeneration? Oh, yeah. I, in 1988, I, I was into heavy construction and I damaged both my cartilages in my knee and I was supposed to go in to have a whole bunch of this old stuff stripped out and then go on a recovery thing for three years. And I didn't have a confidence in the, in the doctor because <laughs> I talked to his, two of his patients. One is now has lost its leg starting with a knee operation and the other one is limping for the rest of their life. So I chickened out and didn't go. And then of course we started Rife and we were into it about, well pretty well about a year. And uh, one night, one of the guys in the group, a great big guy, 400 pounds, he gets up, he said, I've had enough of this sitting around stuff. I think it's time that we talk about what's happening here. And he says, I'll tell you, he says, my knees have been so bad, but not lately. He says, since I've been coming here, my knees are better. And you know, I realized my pain was gone as well. And that's it. And we've had all kinds of that sort of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Dave. Don, I would like to take the opportunity to mention that at the last Rife convention in Edmonton, I was one of the security of officers in looking after the situation, and one of the gentlemen who had a Rife machine set up at the north end of the room that was for the displays, I don't know his name, I never went back to check. It was the last day, and there wasn't very many people there. It was quiet, and I was just kind of wandering around, making sure that everything was going well. And he invited me to lay down on his couch. <coughs> I laid down and was looking up at the ceiling, and he turned the machine on. I was there for probably two to three minutes, I have a floater in my right eye that's been there for many years. My left eye has been destroyed, so I don't see out of that one. But the floater in my right eye, as I was watching this, looking up at the ceiling, the little strings and fingers that come off it were, were slowly receding. And I ended up with a very small spot after about three minutes. I didn't say anything to the gentleman that was running the booth. I don't even know his name. I figured at the next convention, which I understand is scheduled for Las Vegas next year, I believe it's March. I oh, can't confirm that at the moment. But I do want to find that gentleman who had that booth, and who had that machine. I want to find out if he knows that that will actually eliminate a floater in the eye. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, David. I'm, I'm, go I'm going to put a little bit of a commercial in here. It's some, it's some of the stuff that we've built, by the way, and, and it's important for you to know that. And it's not, it, it's not to sell it. It's to make you aware of what is available today and how you can be helped with it. <coughs> this device is our, our basic Rife Bear device. It comes with a, a miniature computer, this little blue-looking thing here, we call it the hammerhead, is actually a computer, has its own motherboard, CPU, and all that sort of stuff, and we put our frequencies into that. When it operates those frequencies, it drives this machine and makes it a whole thing. <coughs> this machine by itself can't do anything more than turn a light on. As soon as you start driving it and putting the right amount of power to it, it makes it into a functional thing. But as time went, we had different needs. We originally started out with a manual one where you had to punch the numbers in time it on a watch, three minutes, whatever, and go to the next one. <coughs> but then there were limitations. What we found is that there was a need for <coughs> a contact type device, something that would drive this machine, and another new part of technology that we're working on with light where we take high intensity LEDs, run it through this generator, <coughs> and you can actually put it at the actual puncture points on the body and get benefit just off this little bitty light under frequency, which means that if you had a liver problem, you can actually deliver signal right directly to the liver through the nerve system, electrical system of the body. Is that music? Oh. <laughs> 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 
th this is a whole new way of dealing with, with minor problems in health. Now I've tried it out, and I, I, I know it works. I, had a, I went out to see my daughter, and I ended up uh, uh, coming down with hay fevers. I went through the Fraser Valley. By the time I got to Edmonton, my eyes were so puffy and so forth. And from rubbing them, when I came back on the trip, I got infection. I ended up with strep. Anyway, I took one of the LEDs, and I put it up against this big pustule I had on the inside of my eye. And just in a matter of about uh, four hours, it was down. And I ran the rifle for the rest, and it cleared the rest of my eyes up. But I wanted to try it. And I tried these little LEDs in a number of different ways. And it's a, un a unique way of dealing with light and frequency in, in, in medicine today. The other thing that this will do, you're going to adjust the voltage so that it become a contact type device, much like a Hulda Clark device, but many more times sophisticated because it's got a variation of almost a million hertz on it. You can just about do any harmonic, it set any kind of a program with you. So what it will mean is like normally when you buy these things as a contact type device through other companies, you'll pay two, three thousand dollars American for them. So now for just two or three hundred dollars more, you can have the best of two systems. So if your practitioner is out there in the next year or so, you're going to see more and more of this sort of thing coming online. And it's built out of demand. We're users of this stuff all the time. I, I work with people pretty well full time, and we find out what the limitations are on the, the equipment that is out there. So that's our stuff that we're doing. So that's my commercial. And uh, I'd just like to thank everybody for <laughs> actually sitting there and listening. And uh, remember, this is your empowerment. I'm going to be around till Monday morning if anybody needs to talk to me about whatever about this stuff, happy to do so. And uh, I want to thank everybody for, again, like being here. So my applause to you. <laughs>